done, and don't you've been I? Living up to that this week, haven't you? You've I been have on the tools all week. Still got paint on my fingernails. She's oh, real deal. She I really just finished is. 100 project number 117 yesterday, so Amazing. I'm a bit tired oh, today. Wow. Now, I'm sure oh. you see this all the time when people are doing renovations, people overspending and um, overcapitalising usually on the property. Where should people be spending their money? Uh, where they should be spending money is the big things that add the most value and normally they're things that can be seen. So um, I always say invest your money in visual surface improvements, things like you would never invest money in insulation, for example, particularly if you're doing a cosmetic renovation. So, yeah. What should you invest in, materials or labour? Um, you need a bit of both. So there's some general rules of thumb um, when you're renovating for profit. So um, typically your budget wise, um, I guess if we talk about budgets first, um, so people often say, look, what do we, what do we spend on our cosmetic mm -hmm. renovation? So typically 10%, if you've got a house, it's 10% of your current property value. So just to break that down, let's say for example, your house is currently worth 600,000, um, you would spend $60,000 on your cosmetic renovation and not a cent more and that's to transform the whole property inside and out and every dollar that you spend over that you're over capitalizing for apartments it's around 7.5 percent as a general rule of thumb so don't spend more than that you can spend less if you do great and for structural renovations there's really no formula because a structural renovation really depends on how many square meters and the quality of the fixtures and fittings but there's some really good rules of thumbs to but stick when by you, when you're adding all of that up is it easy to forget the cost of labor when you kind of think oh the, the kitchen cupboards will cost this much and the paint will cost that much. Labour is still a, a concern, isn't it? It is, yeah. So typically with your budgets, 40% um, of your budget will typically go on materials and 60% on labour. So it's a generally a good rule of thumb. So what people should do, first of all, is they should cost up their whole renovation before they start. And that's what most Australians don't do. So what happens is people start a renovation and they, you know, they, they don't really have a grand plan before they mm. start. And then they start and um, a whole host of things go wrong. And I've seen these amazing tiles that I must have. Or, that's right, yeah. and they get carried away, and you know they plan to spend fifty, and they end up spending five hundred thousand dollars. So it can all be avoided. What's... Yeah, <laughs> and, there's, and there's nothing you can do about it after the fact. So if you plan, so what happens is I often I'll map up map out a renovation its entirety before I start, so I know exactly what's happening, what's happening on what days, what materials I'm installing, and often when I cost up a project initially, I might say for example if it's a five hundred thousand dollar house and my reno budget's 50 I might cost everything up and it might be it might come to 70,000 before I start so then what I do is I cull before the renovation starts and that's the smartest way to renovate I've also been you know along to your workshops and and, and seen your crowds go crazy it's like Madonna's <laughs> arriving um, you also talk interestingly about not a cent more but not a cent less so you still think that spending that amount is important to realize the value of the property that you're renovating yeah you've got to be careful not to skim too much because buyers like Buyers and renters are not stupid. So, for example, um, I, as I said earlier, I just finished um, project number 117 yesterday, and one of the things that I did is I installed some aluminium slimline Venetians, but I went that one step further and I added beautiful curtains because I could have saved money there, but the property wouldn't have looked as nice, mm. and that would have been um, more difficult to achieve a resale price at the level that I wanted. Right now you like to buy materials in bulk formats, which not everybody can do, obviously, um, but how does that work for you? Oh no, everybody can buy materials in bulk formats. So I've got a bit of show and tell today. I feel I like a show teacher. And tell. <laughs> um, so things cost, in terms of saving money um, on um, bulk formats, for example, I just picked these up from Bunnings this morning. Bunnings is my favourite store. People like think I, Russ, isn't it? I know, people think I shop at Prada. I don't, it's Bunnings. Um, so, for example, this is just a normal PowerPoint that you can get in Bunnings. Prada doesn't sell those. No, they don't. <laughs> but we can always start. <laughs> Gold encrusted yeah, yeah, PowerPoints. Yeah. Um, so this particular PowerPoint was actually about, I've actually written the prices here, $7.35 if you buy this single. So what happens is most people will go into stores like Bunnings and they'll just grab, you know, 40 PowerPoints because that's about how many PowerPoints you need across a whole property mm. um, and you'll pay $7.35. But if you just go like a few bays over, you can actually buy the bulk pack of 10 
10 so this is just a trade pack and the price actually drops down to $6.29 so you've actually just instantly saved $1.10 per PowerPoint and 40 PowerPoints in a property there's a $45 saving so you might not think oh that's much but it's $45 saving here $50 yeah, there correct. $80 yeah, there which is the money and for the curtains that's all, exactly all right. amazing handles in the kitchen instead of the boring basic ones I gotta show you the yeah, kitchen yeah. all right oh, so you what was coming <laughs> <laughs> it was. It's like we scripted we, we that. We the same language, I suppose. <laughs> we do. Um, so this is just a normal kitchen cupboard handle. Now, every kitchen normally takes between 30 to 40 handles in a standard kitchen. Yep. Okay, you've seen it. How much is that one? That one is $4 if you buy it individually. Now, if you have a look, this is a bulk pack of 10, so it's just a trade pack. Would you say that is almost an identical handle? Yeah, it looks yeah. identical. So if you buy them in the bulk pack, it, this is $4 individually, this is $2.30. So your handles are almost half price just by buying in the bulk pack of 10. Yeah, I love it. Okay, rollers. Just people, their rollers. Like people don't think about their paintbrushes and rollers. This is just a little two pack of uh, material rollers. That's $5 for two rollers, so it works out $2.50. If you buy it in the bulk pack, the price drops down to $1.80 per roller. So everything can, you can save money just by buying in the right format. Even your paint. Your paint is one of the biggest things that most people invest money in their renovations. So this is just a two litre of Torbens. Um, and this is on a small format. This is $25 a litre. If you go up to the next size it drops down to around $17 a litre and then if you go up to the 10 15 litre drums which I didn't fancy carrying into the studio <laughs> today um, the well, price you don't care about this segment Sheree yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the price drops down to like 10 15 dollars a litre so obviously the, it'd be silly for most people to go buy a little four litre tin if they're doing a bigger renovation so always buy your largest format first and then if you need a little bit extra right at the tail end buy the small pack but the larger the sizes and bulk packs, your costs get driven down. And it amounts to thousands of dollars yeah, of saving over a whole renovation. Do you know how funny it is? I've seen her with so many tins of paint. I sort of think of this as like a Cherie handbag. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen oh, yeah. her carrying them so many times. Um, one thing that's interesting when you're looking at this, I get this you know, deal, but you talk about being able to save money on labour too with tiling. Now, I know in my world design, I've got to think about this, there's set prices for tiling you know so how do you save money on tiling labor okay so this is the thing like if you're renovating your own home knock yourself out just go buy whatever tiles float your boat because you're going to be looking at that home for the next 10 20 years but if you're renovating for a profit the rules are a little bit different so for example people sometimes get a little bit carried away with design and they'll start installing you know beautiful tiles like for example these are just some small format tiles you can get crazy with you know these sorts of stuff um, this is another example of feature tiles beautiful. on a sheet beautiful but Marble wildly hex. expensive mm. now if you look at this for example this is just a classic subway tile which a lot of people um, use so in my experience to buy smaller tiles is a lot more expensive to buy like this is actually quite expensive to buy per sheet um, you know it's, it's 20 30 dollars a sheet mm. um, and sometimes the subway tiles can be expensive as well so definitely um, this is what you call a 300 by 600 tile um, and what most people don't realize um, so these are often quite cheap as well. It's very common it's to pick up. Big tiles often look a lot better. So mm. uh, they do. Less grout. Yeah. That's right. Less less grout, line, less, less grout yeah. lines. Less grout lines. And uh, and so you can you know very readily pick these up for fifteen twenty dollars a square meter from tile factories. But what most people don't realise is that the small tiles cost a lot more in tiling labour to install mm. than the big tiles because here if you're doing a kitchen splashback they might have to install like 80 of them yes. whereas these um, they'll only have to install six or nine depending on the kitchen so it's far quicker for the tiler to install a three by six hundred rather than smaller tiles so most people don't realize these sorts of things and you know often people say people to me how can you renovate so cheaply yeah. <laughs> but once you know the rules it's easy just to roll it out project after project so how do you control your trading costs that's obviously one way like sort of minimize the actual bits of work they'll mm. have to do. Yeah. What else can you do? So a couple of things. Um, first of all, always make sure the tradie comes and sees your job first. Um, a lot of people ring up and say, look, I've just got a kitchen splashback that I want tiled and some tradies will go, oh, okay, love, that'll cost $350. And then what happens is they get there and they go, oh, you didn't tell me about that and that, now it's $550. So always get them to come to your property and quote. Um, 
definitely where possible give them a scope of works as a homeowner you you yourself need to be really clear about what you want so what happens is a tradie will start job and the homeowner will go oh can you do this as well can you do that as well and the tradie will always go yeah of course I can do that mm. but tick, that'll tick, cost tick. you extra love Bing. and that's a variation yeah. and tradies make their money on variations um, where possible always ask for a fixed price quote so for me as a renovator um, I always try and get fixed price quotes and it's amazing when tradies are in on a fixed price quote it's amazing how quickly they get in and out of the job when they're on hourly rates they go that little bit and they slower. can have a chat and, isn't chat the weather and great a coffee today? yeah and um, you're, you're paying for that and one of the biggest things is um, make sure you see the tradies work before you appoint them so what happens is people can't discount the cost of rework mm. um, if you don't know the quality of a tradies works before you appoint them and they don't do a great job you're going to have to bring somebody else in that ultimately costs you money so there's some big trades that I say always check their work painters floor sanders tilers you don't need to check a landscape gardener because anybody can plan a plant literally mm. um, but there's some trades that you definitely want to check their work to avoid rework and what about finding these trades in the first place do you think do, is, is, is referral really important I mean you do this a lot so you have you know set trades that you use or the, I've got them a couple of my your trades are my mates <laughs> but um, you know do you you would, for people at home now with the yeah. smaller jobs and they're not doing them so often where do you think they could source to make Look, sure there's they get a whole quality? host of places um, definitely referrals are your strongest point um, you can go to the industry associations um, you can also um, th believe it or not there's actually um, tradies often will refer other yes. trades like there's a lot of bromance in trade <laughs> land like they know everybody and if you say hey like if I said to Mick my chippy mm. that's a real Aussie name is it I'm yeah, Aussie yeah. trained eh? Mick the chippy um, if I said Mick I need um, a sparky or whatever he'd say yeah try this person so often your tradies are a good source and and even sites like Airtasker um, people don't look at sites like Airtasker Air, and look they can be a bit hit and miss um, you've just got to try and see their work before you appoint them I can't stress that enough but there are always reviews and things on those sorts of yeah. sites like Airtasker yeah um, so top five tips for keeping your budget low on a renovation so definitely buy in bulk formats as we've shown today um, look for fake clones so I know you're, you're probably what's going that? Oh. what's that well, you know how you can go to like New York Canal Street and you can buy a fake Louis Vuitton and Chanel right. bag? You can do exactly the same thing for your fixtures and fittings. So a lot of companies now, um, cheaper companies, they rip off the looks of the more expensive and nicer looking designer fixtures and fittings mm -hmm. where you can pick them up for a slither of the price. Um, avoid custom make. So in when you're renovating for profit, try and avoid anything that's custom made because custom made is typically more expensive than off the shelf as well. Um, buy good quality secondhand materials. So one of the favourite places that I always look is on sites like eBay and Gumtree. It's amazing how many people stuff up their renovation and they'll buy fixtures and fittings that the stores won't take back. Um, so what they do is they on sell them onto eBay. So I've picked up basins for like $70 that if I went to a retail shop would have cost me $1,000. Mm. Um, you know, beautiful cast iron baths that are in great condition for next to next. Um, and buy during the sale and the clearance time. So I'm always very active, you know, in January, yeah. buying stuff I don't need, like doorknobs and handles, stuff that's been slashed 20 or 30%, and I just stockpile it for when my next renovation starts. It's probably also a good point for people who are renovating if they have any excess stock from their renovation too, as a point to, to sell it and get some of their money back too. So it's yeah. a win-win for everybody, yeah, isn't it? and better for the planet. Yeah, yeah. yeah and even good. when you're ripping stuff out in your demolition sale, like don't instantly throw everything in the skip bin. You'd be amazed at what junk people buy on Gumtree and eBay so mm. I call that a demolition sale it's all money that comes back into your budget mm. And yeah. there's always the skip dippers who'll go and get it out of your skip for a you. Skip yeah, dipper. and your skip dipper. You Ooh. never heard of them? No, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> I love these. They 